out. It may help you. Okay, and have a great day. Hi, you guys. It's Yaz. Tonight, I'm going to talk about stop second guessing yourself when you're dating or in a relationship with somebody. This is a common problem among a lot of people that are trying to hang in there with somebody that is either disrespecting them or just treating them poorly. All right. I get a lot of people that come to me and they tell me, you know, the person they're with can get very angry with them, start yelling and screaming with them, almost to the point where they shut them down. And that person rides it out without putting boundaries there. And then you have other people that are dating somebody and that person is clearly, clearly breaking boundaries and they're sitting there and they're second guessing themselves. Like we had one person that came to us and they said that she was engaged to somebody and she went through his phone and she saw that he was he was contacting a prostitute and asking her how much and he never met up with that girl because he got the text later she said and she broke up with him and she she was asking did I do the right thing? Did I do the right thing? And the thing is this, number one, he broke your trust. Okay. If, if somebody knows that that is something that they shouldn't be doing and they're doing it, okay, they're trying to get away with it. And if you allow somebody to get away with it, a lot of times they will do it again. Now, In a situation like that, yes, she should walk away, okay? Because where there is no trust, there is no relationship. So if she can't trust that person, she can't be in a relationship with that person. The trust is broken. It's like a vase that breaks. That that crack is still there even when you glue it back together. So in that case, that's totally different than let's say somebody saying they're supposed to call you and they don't call you. Then you have to you have to give somebody, I always say give them one chance, okay, in a situation like that. It really depends on the boundary that they break. But if they do something like that, like they don't call you or something like that, or you, you've been in a relationship and they've stayed out late or something to that effect, and you put that boundary and they do it again after you've made it clear that if you do it again, I'm going to walk away, then you have to walk away. But see, the thing is, so many people second guess themselves and they say, well, you know, a lot of people are in difficult relationships. Nobody's perfect. You know, we're all human. We all make mistakes. You know, I want to be that ride or die chick. All right. And there's nothing wrong with wanting to be a ride or die, or in other words, somebody that's going to be there for somebody and stick it through thick and thin. But you have to look at it from the other side. You have to look at it from the side that that person is disrespecting you. You need respect in a relationship. And if it starts out that way, it's only good. If that person continues to break your, your boundaries It's going to keep happening because there is no consequence. There is no threat that you will walk away. And this happens a lot. Or you may get somebody that you're you're dating and they're always wonderful in the beginning, right? And then things start to get a little comfortable. And maybe that person starts insulting you all the time. Or that person starts cursing you out or using profanity on you. That's the first step to toxicity. Okay. You have to recognize that and you have to check that person. You have to let them know that's not acceptable because when you don't check them, they will go on to the next toxic move, which could be to push you or shove you. 
And then if you don't set your boundaries, it could go to a, the next toxic move where they could hit you, okay? And in some cases, people have ended up dead in domestic murders over situations like that. When they were dating these people, a lot of these people were very charming and very nice in the beginning. That's why these people were still living off what they had in the beginning of the relationship with them, that nice person, that nice guy, okay? You could say the same thing about serial killers. They're very nice in the beginning, okay? And then the real them comes out. But you have to, I'm not saying the people you're meeting are going to end up a serial killer. I'm just using that as an example. But what I'm trying to say is the people that you meet in the beginning, you guys, that is their best face. That's when the mask is on. That's when you're seeing the best of that person. And the longer that you go out with that person, more and more layers of that mask come off and you start to see what that person is really about. That's why I always say you have to move slowly. You have to take your time with people and you cannot believe everything they tell you in the beginning. We just had another woman that asked a question. She was dating this guy. She was saying everything was wonderful. She knew him from her church. He was love bombing her. She fell into the trap of believing everything he said. And then lo and behold, he ghosted on her and he disappeared. Now she's saying, I don't know how I'm going to face him when I go to church. Okay. I told her, I said, listen, you cannot believe everything that these people tell you in the beginning. That's why you have to take it slow. That's why you have to look at their pattern. Are they consistent? Do they get on the phone? Are they seeing you on a regular basis? And it's got to continue like that for weeks, weeks, because the fake ones can't keep it up. The actors can't keep it up. It's very difficult for them to pretend to be something that they're not. And they're going to show themselves, you guys. People always show you who they are. Just give them enough rope and they'll hang themselves. Believe me when I tell you, because I've seen enough of this. I've lived enough life and I've seen it. You, you could see it in business. You could see it in family relationships. You could see it in friendships, anything. If you just sit back and you just observe and watch people and watch what they do and watch their patterns, they will show you what type of person they are. But it's up to you, up to you to see them for who they are. It's up to you to observe them and see what kind of character you're, you're dealing with, okay? The people that are real, the people that are sincere will be consistently sincere throughout the whole time that they know you, okay? I mean, you may have times when you're dating somebody that, you know, after a while, it's not as exciting because you've been dating them a while, but bottom line is they're still there for you. They're, they're still making time for you. They're still making you a priority. They're still concerned on how you are as a person. They take an interest. They ask questions. They're into you. Okay, that's how you know. But see, a lot of people are making excuses and second guessing themselves. That's why one of the number one questions that people always ask is, I don't know if, if this person is into me. I don't know. They send me mixed signals. I don't know. If you have to question it, then there's a problem. Okay, I've said this before. When somebody really likes you, they will let you know. They will not leave you in the dark. That's just a fact, you guys. So you have to question it. And you have to watch them. You have to see, you know, what is their pattern? What is their pattern with you? How often are they making time to see you? Are they bringing references up of sex in the beginning? Are they very selfish and talking about themselves all the time? I'm just giving you examples of how to analyze people so that you know when you get involved with somebody, you know what kind of person you're dealing with. You know if you're dealing with somebody that is maybe controlling. 
that is going to start, you know, wanting to put a password on your phone or something like that. So these are all clues that you have to pick up. You have to pick up on it. But you cannot sit there and you cannot make excuses for people who blatantly disrespect you and disrespect your boundaries. You cannot sit there. If you're dealing with somebody and you're in a committed relationship and let's just say you're you're even engaged or married or you're you've been dating this person a while and this person cheats on you, they have broke your boundary and that's a big one. That's a big one, you guys. And it's up to you to decide how you want to go with it. I don't recommend, I, I mean, I've seen in rare instances where people could work it out and I'm talking rare, rare, okay? That's when somebody really is remorseful for what they did and they show you that they they want to change and they are consistent in their, that. Not just that they tell you for the first two weeks because they want to get back together with you and then they go back to their old ways. Most people are who they are. So y- when you look at somebody, that's look at them and say, that's who they are. That's not who they're going to be, okay? Because you can't change somebody. They can only change themselves. And the only way they're going to change is if they want to change. And if you put up that barrier and, and you put you put up that boundary rather and you let them know that if you want to be with me, you have to, you have to, you know, you can't stay out all night. You can't ghost me. If you do it again, I'm going to walk away. If that person cares, they will respect your boundaries. If they don't, then you can't sit here and make excuses and be crying about it every two minutes and saying, oh my goodness, you know, that he, he, he was out all night again and I told him he better not do that and he did it again. Well, there was no consequences because you're still there. And now you're even making excuses. Now, whatever that person is telling you, oh, you know, my phone fell in the river. Oh, I didn't have Wi-Fi. Oh, we we got one in our group where he said he broke down on the road. And it was, I can't even begin to tell you what a story it was. And she found out later, you know, it was all nonsense. But the stories that people come up with and people try to justify and everything, if it doesn't sound right, then you have to question it. And if you see it happening a lot, then that is a huge red flag. And you can't just sit there and and, and be second guessing everything, okay? You have to cut through the bullshit and you have to spot it. And when you spot it, you have to say to yourself, I am not... I'm, I'm not going to put up with this. I'm going to let them know that if it happens again, I am not going to be in this relationship. Now, if if somebody doesn't give a crap about you, they're going to keep doing it, okay? And maybe they don't have respect for you because they feel like, you know what? She's not going anywhere or he's not going anywhere. You know, I've done this a thousand times and they're still around. You have to be strong, you have to be stern and, and and you have to say it very forthright and let them know, not in a yelling and screaming manner, but you have to let them know you mean business, okay? And if that person is not going to take you seriously, then you have to cut that person loose and you can't second guess and say, well, you know, maybe they'll change in a few months or, you know... They came back at me and they started saying how much they love me and they're sorry and now they're apologizing and they were drunk or they didn't know what they were doing. These are all excuses, you guys. These are all excuses. Stop giving a pass to people that don't deserve it. They're laughing at you behind your back. They're they're laughing at you because they're saying... Oh my goodness, she's a fool, okay? Or he's a fool, depending on who you're dealing with. Because I keep doing this and they don't, you know, she's believing every story that I tell her, okay? If it walks like a duck, talks like a duck, pretty much it's a duck, all right? 
and stop second guessing it. And I needed to bring this up because I see it time and time again. I see so many people second guessing, second guessing. We had another one in our group where she caught her she caught her man sexting or texting somebody on social media. She's already warned him numerous times, you know, stop inboxing these women. And he's making excuses like, well, they're just friends and everything like that. You know, that that's just my friends. And, you know, it's you. You're you're there's something wrong with you. You're just very jealous. That's where, where the gaslighting comes in. In some cases, you guys, where they try to gaslight you and make you think that you're crazy. Don't fall into the trap and believe that. OK, if you're feeling a certain way, there's a reason you're feeling a certain way and you need to trust your gut. And you need to put that boundary in place and let them know you are crossing you are crossing my boundary. Because I'm sure they wouldn't want you inboxing somebody on social media. And if they didn't care if you were inboxing somebody on social media and talking to them in a very flirtatious way, then that is somebody who doesn't care about you. And you better realize it and it's time to you know walk away. Not to stay with people that aren't all in. That's another thing. People make excuses and they stay with people that they only get half a person. Why are you settling for half a person? Why are you settling for somebody that keeps making excuses why they can't see you? Okay? Like we had another person, she was dealing with a guy. This guy made very good money. He was an over-the-road truck driver. He only lived like maybe three hours away from her. And he was, this guy was a single guy. You know, he, he had one uh, child that was grown. He didn't have like a bunch of kids that he was supporting or anything like that. And he was making excuses why he couldn't see her. He was telling her this, you know, money is tight and this and that. But on the other hand, he was bragging to her about how he was going to buy a very expensive sports car. So right there shows you where his priorities are. His priority was not to coming to see her. His priority was to stay where he is and save money for his sports car or whatever. And she said to him, how much could it cost you to come see me? You're not getting on a plane. The tolls only cost you maybe $20 and then gas could only cost you maybe $40. So you see what I mean when I say people make excuses? So he was making excuses as to why he was not going to see her. And she was kind of trying to justify it in her mind as saying, well, you know, maybe he really doesn't have it and this and that. Meanwhile, the guy is making over $1,500 a week take home. So he had the money, you guys, but he was making excuses. And later on, she found out through his friend that he was seeing another girl that lived closer to him. So you see what I mean? She wasn't a priority. She was an option because he had this other girl where he lived closer to his neighborhood. So he didn't have that that thirst to go see her and meet her because he had somebody on the side. All right. He was a single guy, but he had a situationship. So you have to stop making excuses for people. OK, and you have to realize that you, you don't want half a person because you could a lot of people they will say, well, you know what? I'll deal with half a person. It's better than. Uh, it's better than being alone and having nobody. But see, here's the thing. When you have that half a person, you're going to be sitting there and you're going to be staring at your phone and you're going to be wondering, there are going to be times when that person doesn't contact you and it could be a Friday or Saturday night and you're going to start to get attached to this person. The more you see them, a lot of times people get more and more attached and they want more and more. And if this person is not giving you more and more, it's going to bother you. And you're going to get to a point where it's going to eat away at your gut till you explode and you say something to that person. And at that point, you're going to end up going to that person and you're going to say something to them like, you know, are you interested in me or not? 
We get a lot of that too, you guys. We get people that are dating someone and they feel that the person is not showing them enough interest. So they get to a point, they try to hang in there and they try not to say something, but then they get to a point where they're like, you know what, fuck it, I'm just going to say something. And they get to that point where they just say, you know, are, are, you know, do you want something with me or do you not want something with me? And then the person, you get two answers with that, depending on the type of person you're dealing with. You could either get the, the one answer where the person tells you, oh, no, definitely, I want something. I just been busy with work or I'm working on this project in my house. You know, no, no, we'll see more of each other. You know, that's the fluff answer to like shut you up. And, or you could get the other person that says to you like, well, you know, I, you know, I just came out of a relationship or I'm taking it slower. I don't really know what I want or something like that. Because here's the thing. It doesn't really matter what they say to you because their actions already told you what they want for you. How they treat you is how much they like you. I don't care who it is. I don't care how busy at work they are. I don't care how poor they are. They could still get a cheap uh, ice cream cone date, a cup of coffee date, a slice of pizza date. When somebody wants to see you, trust and believe they will see you, okay? So don't buy all these other excuses. Stop giving people passes that keep making excuses. When somebody likes you, they are going to want to see you. Point blank, you guys. Point blank. So the level of interest has to be there. You don't want half a person. And the other problem with that scenario is this. If you get to that point where you had to say something to the person like, you know, seems like you're really not that interested in me or, you know, what do you want from me? Right then and there, just put a big tattoo across your head that says desperate. Because the moment you say anything like that, you are showing your hand. The minute you say anything like that, that person's going to look at you and say, I got her wrapped. I got her wrapped around my finger. Look at her over there. She's sweating me. She's worried about what we are. She's worried about the fact that we're not seeing enough about each other. Don't ever do that, you guys. Believe me when I tell you. You know, if somebody's not showing you enough, then get out there and find somebody else that is. There's plenty of other people in the world. You just have to apply yourself. You can't give up. You just have to say to yourself, you know what? There's other people out there. It's better than dealing with half a person. And I need to stop making excuses and stop living in the fantasy that this person is going to change. I'm telling you, most of the time they won't. Most of the time they won't. So if the interest isn't there and it's not there, especially in the beginning, you know, it's going to get less and less once they get comfortable, once the novelty of something new starts to wear off, you know, you start to be something, you know, it starts to get a little bit, I don't want to say it gets complacent, it gets a little bit boring at times, and it takes a real mature person to understand that in a relationship, it's not all fun and games, okay? It's not, you know, ride off on the on the white horse and the picket fence and, oh, uh, you know, we're living in the land of Oz. No, no. A real relationship means that you love the person because that person is a rock solid person that you have respect for. And that person, you know, that person you could go to and you can confide in that person and you have a connection where you could sit and talk to that person. When you're having a problem, you can open up to that person and that person can open up to you and and you're going to work together and you're going to compromise to try to build something with each other, you know, build a life together down the road if, if that's where you're going with this. But you have to stop wasting your time second guessing your decisions you know when in doubt write it down on a piece of paper 
you know, keep a log of things sometimes and write down, you know, when somebody is crossing your boundaries, you have to do some introspect. You have to know yourself. You can't just say, oh, you know, I'm going to let it go. Oh, you know, I'm going to let it go. I'm going to let it go. I'm going to let it go. You have to know yourself. You have to know how much you can accept and how much you can accept. Okay. And because you don't want to fool yourself because it's going to bother you later on. So you might as well be honest with yourself and you better write it all down and don't think that there's nobody else out there. There's plenty of people out there. Okay. And, and maybe you won't be dealing with this nonsense. You'll find somebody, you won't have to sit there all, all the time and question yourself and second guess everything. And you know, oh, that person is, you know, inboxing somebody on social media and flirting with them or something like that, you know, or you're texting them and they're not replying and you see them on social media. How, and they're, how much could they like you if they're not texting you back, but you see them on social media? It's right there, guys. It's right there. How much they show you is how much they like you. So if they're not showing you enough, then do, why are you with them? Why are you bothering? Why are you giving that person an ego boost by being with them? Because that's what you're doing. You're giving them an ego boost. That's why so many guys have the upper hand today. That's why so many guys don't want relationships because they know there's so many women that are going to put up with crap, okay? And you got guys too that got, are going through the same thing. You got nice guys out there too that are dealing with women that are not showing them enough interest either because these women are trying to be players and talking to a bunch of different guys and this guy is trying to get to know her and she's not giving him enough either. So why are you dealing with her? You shouldn't second guess yourself. If they're not, listen, if they're not, if they're not going to be straight up and, and, you know, deal the way you should deal in a relationship when you try to get to know somebody, then they're not worth your time. They're not worth your time. You know, you have to, you know, it's not about playing games, okay? It's not about playing games and we're, nobody's looking to force anybody to put a ring on anybody's finger either, but it's about either you're serious about getting to know somebody or you're not serious about getting to know somebody. And if you're serious about getting to know somebody, you will want to be around that person. If you find that you're dating someone and they, you know, they only want to see you some of the time, you know, maybe they want to see you once a week, maybe they want to see you once every two weeks, Th these are your clues that that person isn't that into you, okay? And stop second guessing it and stop second guessing people that break your boundaries. When somebody ghosts you, you give them a warning, you give them one, you give them one chance, you guys. When they ghost you, you give them one chance and you make them clear and you let it let them know that you know what? I don't deal with people that disappear when they say they're going to call me and then I try contacting them. Well, first of all, you shouldn't be chasing anybody. And if they don't contact you back all night long and then the next morning, hey, beautiful, okay, if you don't set them straight, it's going to happen again. So you got to let them know. And I'm talking about people that you've been dating consistent, consistent, you know, and you guys have been regular, you know, in the beginning, you don't really owe anybody anything if it's just, you know, in the very, very beginning. So you really can't say much about that. But that is a huge red flag as to how much respect they have for you. And you need to make a mental note of that. And, and it'll show you if they really cared about you, it takes literally, literally less than 30 seconds to send a text. There's no excuse. Okay, no excuse. Okay, I hope that helps you guys. If it did, Please hit the subscribe button and share and have a great night. Hi, it's Yaz. And I just want to let you guys know that if you're having a problem in your dating or your relationship, go to my website, link in the bio, and I'm offering uh, email or phone coaching 
because everybody's problems are different and sometimes you just want a confidential opinion on a situation you're in, you're confused, you don't know what to do, you you love your partner and you're having problems and you just need somebody to tell it to you straight as to what's going on, why it's going on and offer you some ideas of how to solve the problem. So go to the website, link in the description and check it out.